one in every five people in Canada is an immigrant. Nearly 22% of the population is foreign-born, while empathy and multiculturalism are celebrated as cornerstones of a progressive society, what happens when these ideals clash with the realities of rapid population shifts and economic pressures? Imagine an immigration crisis so severe that Canadians themselves start heading to the U.S., a country grappling with its own immigration challenges. The empathy-driven narrative often overlooks the economic reality of immigration. Abrupt and massive population changes have raised significant concerns in Canada. Jobs, voting power, and cultural impacts are central worries, yet critics are often dismissed as intolerant. I'm not against immigration, but the sheer number of people coming in is overwhelming. Our schools, hospitals, and job markets are struggling to cope. When I voiced my concerns about the changing demographics, I was called a racist. But it's not about hate, it's about preserving the community I've known my entire life. Are concerns about demographic shifts justified? Over the past decade, regions in Canada have seen population increases up to 20% due to immigration. In 2023, over 431,000 new permanent residents arrived, the highest number in recent history, leading to job market saturation, increased housing competition, and strained public services. Recently, a violent clash between Eritrean groups in Calgary involving 150 people resulted in 11 hospitalizations, highlighting growing tensions within immigrant communities. Similar conflicts in Edmonton and Toronto reflect deep-seated political and social divisions brought by some immigrant groups. Canada now has vast ghettos. The Reality of Immigration's Economic Impact Canada's major cities have been particularly affected. Toronto, Vancouver, and Montreal have seen housing prices soar, partly due to the increased demand from new arrivals. According to the Canadian Real Estate Association, CREA, housing prices in Toronto increased by 15% in 2023, with the average home price reaching over $1.1 million. In response, the government introduced new regulations in early 2024, limiting foreign property ownership and providing incentives for affordable housing development. Wildfires in British Columbia in 2024 displaced thousands and put additional pressure on already strained housing markets. The average wait time for medical procedures in major cities has increased by 20% over the past five years. In Toronto, patients now wait an average of 20 weeks for elective surgeries, up from 16 weeks in 2018. Vancouver faces similar challenges, with wait times extending to 22 weeks and Montreal to 18 weeks. The situation was further exacerbated by a flu outbreak in early 2024, which overwhelmed emergency rooms and led to temporary hospital closures in some areas. Additionally, strikes by healthcare workers in 2024 due to overwork and underfunding have highlighted the critical state of the healthcare system. The Toronto District School Board reported a 10% increase in student enrollment in the past two years, leading to overcrowded classrooms and strained resources. Vancouver and Montreal have reported similar trends, with class sizes increasing by an average of 15% and schools struggling to accommodate the influx of new students. Is there enough work for everyone? While immigrants contribute to the labor force, the sudden increase has led to job market saturation in certain sectors. A report by Statistics Canada found that unemployment rates among recent immigrants are nearly double that of Canadian-born citizens, at 10% compared to 5%. This disparity is even more pronounced in high-density areas like Toronto and Vancouver, where competition for jobs is fierce. Additionally, a comprehensive economic report released in 2024 highlighted that while the tech industry and healthcare sectors benefit significantly from skilled immigrants, other sectors face challenges like wage suppression and job displacement. In response to these challenges, nationalist parties have gained traction, their platforms built on addressing these very concerns. They argue for stricter immigration controls and policies that prioritize the needs of Canadian citizens. What drives Canada's immigration policies? Canada has significantly bolstered its border controls, particularly along the U.S.-Canada border. This includes increased patrols, advanced surveillance technology, and stricter enforcement of immigration laws to curb illegal crossings. More rigorous procedures for processing asylum claims were introduced. This includes faster processing times and stricter criteria for granting asylum, aimed at reducing the number of fraudulent or unfounded claims. There has been a notable increase in efforts to identify and deport individuals residing in Canada illegally. 
This includes collaboration with local law enforcement and community outreach to ensure compliance with immigration laws. Temporary visa programs, including those for workers and students, have seen reforms to prevent abuse and ensure that temporary residents do not overstay their visas. Caps on study permits have been introduced to address housing shortages and other resource constraints. To support cultural and social integration, the government has expanded programs aimed at helping immigrants adapt to Canadian society. This includes language training, employment support, and community orientation programs. These policy changes are driven by a combination of security concerns, economic pressures, public sentiment, and political dynamics. These measures, however, have sparked significant public backlash, with large-scale protests erupting in major cities like Toronto and Vancouver in early 2024. Protesters argue that the policies are inhumane and disproportionately affect vulnerable populations seeking asylum. Many Canadians feel that high immigration levels are altering their cultural and social fabric too quickly, leading to calls for more controlled and sustainable immigration policies. What will Canada's future look like? As Canada moves forward, they must consider the long-term implications of massive immigration. Will the national identity evolve for the better? or are they at risk of losing what makes their societies unique? Projections suggest that if current trends continue, significant demographic shifts will redefine national identities in the coming decades. By 2040, it's estimated that immigrants will constitute over 30% of Canada's population. 2024 has seen the beginning of climate migration, with people relocating from regions severely affected by climate change, further challenging Canada's infrastructure and resources. Are border controls enough to curb illegal immigration? Enhanced border controls have been implemented, including increased patrols and advanced surveillance technology. These measures aim to curb illegal crossings, but the problem persists. Over the past three years, illegal migrant encounters at the U.S.-Canada border have skyrocketed by more than 1,000 percent. There's no one-size-fits-all answer, but sustainable immigration levels should be determined by a country's capacity to integrate newcomers without overwhelming its infrastructure and social fabric. Immigration policies need to be flexible and adaptive, considering economic needs, social cohesion, and cultural preservation. Are government measures effective? To manage immigration effectively, Canada has implemented measures such as the Provincial Nominee Program for targeted economic needs and invested in integration initiatives like language training and employment support. Recent policy changes focus on stricter asylum procedures, temporary visa reforms, and intensified efforts to address illegal immigration, driven by security, economic, and public sentiment concerns. High-profile cases of violent crimes committed by undocumented immigrants receive extensive media coverage, fueling public anxiety. For instance, 2023 saw a rise in violent crimes in Toronto and Vancouver, with several cases involving undocumented immigrants. Illegal immigrants are overrepresented in federal prison populations compared to their share of the population, reinforcing narratives of insecurity. Additionally, gangs predominantly composed of individuals with a migration background control significant criminal activities. It's not that we don't want immigrants, but the sheer number and the way they're being integrated are causing real issues in our communities. I'm an immigrant myself, and even I can see that this is too much. We need a more balanced approach that considers both the needs of the country and the newcomers. Is Canadian identity at risk? Despite efforts to promote integration, rising anti-immigrant sentiment has led to an increase in protests and hate crimes in 2024. Cities like Toronto and Montreal have seen a spike in incidents targeting immigrant communities. This growing hostility highlights the deepening divide in public opinion on immigration, with many Canadians fearing that the rapid pace of change threatens their cultural identity. Our town has changed so much in the past few years. It's not that we don't welcome newcomers, but the pace of change is overwhelming. We need time to adjust and resources to help integrate new residents. When I voiced my concerns about the changing demographics, I was called a racist. But it's not about hate. It's about preserving the community I've known my entire life. Unlike in America, where illegal immigration is a significant issue, Canada willingly lets in a large number of immigrants. Trudeau's policies have created severe housing and economic strains. These policies have led to skyrocketing housing costs and overwhelmed public services. It's time for the government to address and fix these issues, as Trudeau's leadership continues to exacerbate the problem rather than solve it. How much immigration is too much for Canada? Where do they draw the line?